It's a wonderful thing when need and values match. You know, we're thrilled to get Daniel. He was, uh, he was up there with everybody else on our board in terms of value. And uh, he, is, he's a, he is just perfect for us. We really think he's going to, we really believe in this kid. And we really believe he's going to be the, a nice, um, not a nice, a real quality quarterback for us, for our franchise. He, uh, he understands what's, what's in front of him. Uh, you know, we've spoken to Eli and, uh, and uh, talked to him. And uh, Daniel's coming in here to learn. Learn how to be a pro, learn how to be a professional quarterback. And um, I'm just, like I said, I, I'm a little tired. We're thrilled to have him. We really are. And, and uh, um, he's the right kid for us. I talked to you guys, you know, they, you know, today I had to go on with uh, Sal Palantonio and, you know, he's, he's just the right guy. He's got the right head. He is a very mature kid. He's, he's going to, I have no doubt he's going to come in and do everything he can to prepare himself to be, to follow Eli when the time is, when, when the time comes. Uh, second guy, we got, got me a hog molly. Hi, right, Dexter Lawrence is, is, um, you know, you guys know he's a, probably might have been the biggest player in the draft. I don't know, but he's he's a quality run player, and he's got, you know, he he's more than just a two down run player. You know, he's this kid can push the pocket, and has you know can impact in the pass rush. And that's why we took him at 17, and we're thrilled. He's a great kid. All three of these kids are great kids. And um, you know we had we had Dexter in here, and and, and uh, um, he's just he can he can play the one, the three, and the five. He's versatile. He's got hips. He can that he can flip uh, to rush the passer, and uh, we're just we're thrilled to have him. And the last guy we traded up for, we feel is the best cover corner in the draft, a kid from Georgia, DeAndre Baker. And uh, we feel like we got three guys that are going to impact this franchise for a long time. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't have anything to add other than um, Jones for us. He's very accomplished. He's very smart. He's very talented. And, you know, when we spoke to Eli, and, I, and I've, I've told this to Eli a couple times already, you know, it's not his job to teach the next quarterback that comes in here. It's his job to be the very best player he can be. And then the quarterback that we bring in, it's his job to be smart enough to learn from Eli. And I think that's a scenario that, that, that we're – we're presented with, um, and so we're thrilled. Um, here's a guy that's played a lot of football, but he's still very young. He's tough. Uh, he's competitive, and he really has all the things we're looking for. Good decision maker. He's got a sense of timing. He's an accurate passer. You know, he's he's athletic and mobile, which is important. Um, you know, in today's game, and so um, you know we're thrilled about him, Dexter. Uh, I was with Linval Joseph, who all of you know, in Minnesota, and he sort of reminded me of him. You know, he's sneaky with the pass rush, but he's really good on first, second down and with the run, run game stuff. Tremendous human being, and he's a big guy, and I think you win with big people. And then Dave hit it, uh, DeAndre Baker. He's a cover corner. The thing that impressed me the most on tape was how, how stinking competitive he is. He's very confident. He's very competitive. And I think when he's faced with a challenge of a good wideout, um, he's going to accept the challenge. And so, um, and again, Dave mentioned the fact that our board met, you know, with some of the needs and some of the things that we wanted to answer, and we were fortunate to get those three players. So we're thrilled to add them and uh, get them in here as quickly as we can, get them going. Dave, to clarify, was, was Daniel Jones your best available player at six? You had a higher grade on him than Josh Allen? We had, first of all, it, it, it is legal for guys to have the same grade. Okay, so when we set up our horizontal, they're on the same line. At what point did you realize that he was your guy? At what point in the process? For me? 
Uh, it's been a while, very frankly. I'll, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what it was. I loved him on film. Absolutely loved him. Loved everything about him. And uh, then I went to the uh, Senior Bowl and uh, watched him that week, and I, I, I had decided to stay for the game. I had, uh, during the season, I had gone to see Dwayne at Ohio State. I had gone to see, I had seen Kyler and Will play each other in that um, Friday night game, Thanksgiving weekend that was in West Virginia. So I'd seen those two play each other. I'd seen Dwayne play in the Big 12. Is that the Big 12 anymore? I don't even know. The championship game, you know, in, in Indianapolis. So I'd seen those three guys play. And to me, it's really important that you see quarterbacks play. It, it, watching them on tape is one thing, but seeing them in the, in, on the, on the, in the environment is, is definitely, I, I think, very important. So uh, Drew, I'm sorry, Daniel, Drew, Jared Stidham, um, uh, Minshew, McSorley, I mean, all these guys were at the were at the uh, Senior Bowl, so I decided to stay. I had already, you know, made up my mind I was staying for the game. And frankly, Jordan, he he walked out there, and I saw a professional quarterback after his, after the three series that I watched. I saw a professional quarterback, so that's when I was in full bloom. Love. <laughs> that's quite a vis That's quite a visual. How much of it has to do with Daniel Jones by himself, and how much of it is the Cutcliffe factor, the e Eli Manning, Peyton? We've heard him compared to Peyton Manning, trained by Eli Manning, that kind of you stuff. You know, I, I, you know, that's that's a nice piece, you know, Ryan. I mean, you know, I, you know, obviously, I mean, Cutcliffe, you know, it's Dave, right? Dave, Cutcliffe, yeah. Dave, he, he's yeah. a hell of a coach now. Right. He didn't fall off the turn of the truck yesterday. So the kid's been well trained, you know. Number one, the fact that um, a huge part of this, and I said this before, I've, I've said it before, a big part of this was is his makeup. All of the, every single kid that was taken in the first round has had very little adversity. All right. So we get into and we talk about this when, when we have our meetings, you know. So, you know, the, and the scout, the area guys go out, and the regional guys are out, and Chris Pettit's out, and we talk about what kind of adversity has this kid ever ever had, you know. And it's that's what you want to know because, and you know, what kind of adversity they had and how they're going to react, which is huge. And very honestly, how are they going to react to you guys? Not and not because you're meanies, okay? Because some of you are nice, but really because because of the volume. It's it's the volume that's different, you know. And it's it, it it that was that's a big part of it for me. But that's like a bonus here. This kid's really talented. He's really a talented football player. And the head makes him more better. Forgetting about the head for a second, what, as far as his talent goes, made you like him more than all the other quarterbacks you just mentioned? You know, his, I, I just thought his, his pocket presence, his poise, it was really important to me because the, I, 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 you know, I've been saying it for a long time. If you can't consistently make plays from the pocket, in the you know you're not going to make it in the NFL. You'll you'll be just another guy. You have to you look at the you look at the Super Bowl winning quarterbacks. They consistently make plays from the pocket. That's what this kid can do, and he is not by any stretch of the imagination a, 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 an average athlete. He's a really good athlete. This kid can extend. He can make plays with his feet. He can buy time in the pocket. He's got feel. He's got you know. He he really has all the things you're looking for. Does he remind you of, of Eli as a player, or is he just, how is he different? 
No. You know, you know, Tom, that's, that's hard for me because very honestly, you know, I didn't scout Eli, you know, in college. Um, I watched film of Eli, but, you know, I, after we took him, I thought maybe it would be a nice idea that I'd watch some film, you know, because back then I was the pro guy. So, you know, I watched some, you know, I watched film before we drafted him. But anyhow, the bottom line is, you know, similar in that, they both were, were playing at that time, you know, Eli and Ole Miss at that time, you know, they're both playing in, in difficult, you know, in the same, you know, in difficult conferences at maybe a, with less, fewer players around them. You know, Eli had a wide receiver that, you know, probably ran four six five, and he had a little scat back running back and, and you know, an okay offensive line and Daniel had about the same thing. Made. Do you think you could have gotten Jones at 17? You never know. And you yeah. weren't willing to risk it? I was not willing to risk it. And is the goal for Eli to start 16 games next season and for Daniel to sit 16 games next season? Well, the goal is, the goal is for Eli to be our quarterback, yes. I told Eli, to, I, I told Eli when we, we visited, you know, it's, it's your job to win games and keep this guy off the field. Well, not, not necessarily. I, I don't think you need to challenge him that way. I mean, I wouldn't phrase it that way. But that's the kind of things you talk about when you, when you put quarterbacks together. Pat, when, when did you know he asked Dave when, when he believed that Daniel was the guy? Did you have a similar process? Yeah, I went through the process. I, I probably spent more time even this year than last year uh, on the quarterbacks from watching them play to um, interviewing them all multiple times, to doing all the research on them, because I think it's important to, to put these quarterbacks through the full process. Um, you know, I think we, we, we took a trip down to um, Duke and visited with Coach Cutcliffe, and he kind of connected some of the things that, because there were some comparisons to Eli, so, and I'm not sure I would, I would share them, but okay, how is he similar, how is he different, you know, and um, I knew by watching him play that it was tough, and that's very high on, on the spectrum for me is toughness, and, and Daniel has that. And so um, as we went through it, you know, and when you watch guys throw, and there's some very talented throwers in this, and very talented, very accomplished quarterbacks in this year's draft, it's quick to, uh, you can fall in love with them at each exposure. But, but by the end of it, um, we really felt like he was our guy, and I felt the same as Dave. You got a different feel, because if I remember correctly, that was the week of the owners' meetings, right? So you weren't at his pro day, but you had a private, right, yeah. you were with him private, privately later that week. A couple of days later, yeah. Do you get a different feel if you're with a guy privately for a workout on campus rather than his pro day? Yeah, but we had private, we had private meetings with all the quarterbacks. We had private meetings with him at the Senior Bowl. We had private meetings. So we had many exposures with, with all the quarterbacks in question. So, um, but yeah, I think when you're with them privately, you get a feel for who they are. And, you know, I think it's really, it's really important to sort through, you know, how they're wired above the neck. It's so important for a quarterback. And that's why all these exposures are very important. Dave, can you talk about where the, corner, the cornerback is going to fit into the equation you have? Jack Rabbit, obviously, Sam Beal, who I believe you said this year if he was coming out, he'd be, have a second round grade. So where do you anticipate Baker fitting in? Well, I mean, he's going he's gonna to walk on. He's going to compete for a starting job. Is he a slot quarterback? I'm sorry? Can he play the spot? Can he play the nickel? He's really an outside guy, but he can play inside. We, um, see, we see him as an outside guy. When you guys look at Daniel Jones, I mean, his production, his numbers are just not there. Now, did you look at that and say, well, what, by, which number, st by what, who's standing? And which numbers? Well, I mean, <laughs> uh, uh, completion percentage, <laughs> touchdowns, things like that. Um, but what I'm saying is, is that a product of the whole operation around him? Because obviously you like the quarterback, you know what I mean? The production's not there, but, but you look at him and say, well, he's playing at Duke and you have to grade a little differently. Uh, or do you, is there something about the numbers that say something about him? For me, I think, there, there's certain things when you watch him play, you just can't look at the raw numbers and say this guy can do it or he can't do it. I mean, there's there's reasons why a ball is complete or incomplete, and I'm not I'm not going to 
I, I really wouldn't share with you why that is. I, I thought he was very productive, and I thought he was competitive and gritty, and he helped his team win football games. Um, you know, I, at some, it's, you know, it's, it's not a fair comparison sometimes, and so you have to watch the player compete and, and work with what he has. And I thought he did a heck of a job uh, leading the Duke football team. When, when did you uh, talk to Eli, and, and what did he like? What was his reaction? I've spoken to Eli throughout this process. But to tell him specifically that, it, that you were we drafted him. Daniel yeah. as it was happening. I spoke to Daniel, and David called uh, Eli. But all along, uh, we've spoken to Eli about, you know, we're we're evaluating quarterbacks in this year's draft, and there's there's a decent chance there may be a new guy here, and. Doesn't bother Eli. Dave, what did you think his reaction was? He was fine. He was fine. I told him it's your job. Let's roll. What did he say? What did I say? He said, let's go. Do you know if JT can play multiple more seasons? This yeah. one plus one, two, right. whatever. Does this end that possibility here because you'll want Jones Absol to take the field next season? Absolutely Bye. not. No. Absolutely not. You know, I, I talked, you know. Maybe we're going to be the Green Bay model, Kim. Where Brett, you know, where Roger sat for three years. Who knows? You know, it's it, 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 it's it's one of those deals where it doesn't make a difference what position it is. You can never have too many good players at one position. You can never have too many good players at one position. Do you think that you drafted a quarterback number six and that he might sit for three years? Who knows? I may go out there in my car and get hit. You don't know, Sal. Okay? You don't know. We drafted it. We drafted a quarterback that we believe is a franchise quarterback. That's really the that's really the end, the long and the shot of it. We feel he's a franchise kid. If Eli can play for three more years, wouldn't you take somebody at number six to help Eli do that? We well, it, it, it's the same. Let me say this to you, Sal. It's the same conversation. It's the same question that Kim asked me. Why didn't you wait to 17? It's really the same question. Okay, you, we don't know. You, 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 life's too shot, short. You, you know, you, you don't know how this is going to work. You know, so again, it's, it's, it, it's, it's people drafting defensive tackles when they already have Two stud starters, why are you doing that? Because you can never, you, it's value, it's where the, the value fits, meets the draft pick. Would you consider extending Eli so it's not considered a lame duck quarterback? That, that's a hypothetical. Sal, so I'm not going there. Uh, that's hypothetical. We'll take a couple more. Were you as enamored as, with, as quickly with um, Daniel Jones as Dave was? Um, I tried to slow my roll on all of the quarterbacks. You know, certainly my first exposure to all of them was their tape. And I, you know, with the way technology is, you can watch every one of their throws or any, any of their actions. And then um, as I got to know them, um, I wanted to go slow on it and I wanted to be very deliberate. Because when John Mara and, and Dave Gettleman said, you know, we want a consensus on this, I wanted to be able to give them an educated answer as to who I thought was going to be our guy. And so I was very deliberate about it um, because this was, going to be, this was going to be a big draft pick. And we drafted a guy that we think can start and be a starter here for a very long time. And when he gets on the field, we'll see. Dave, you obviously had maybe different avenues you could have pursued. Just curious, how, much, how serious was uh, the discussions with Arizona about Rose? There was a lot of reporting about that. How serious was, was the discussion? You know, there was no no discussion. I mean, you know, I, I admitted that I reached out and told them if things happen, we might have an interest. That's it. Let's take one more. Dave, Dave you said with, uh, with Lawrence, you, I know in the past when you were in Carolina, you talked about KK Short and how you put in there and it was kind of a rotation. Do you see Lawrence as a rotation with Hill and Tomlinson, or do you see a guy who can play – the three of those guys across. We could play all three. You know, he could. We could play them all three across at the same time. 
I mean, it, it's, it's, you know, it's big men allow you to compete at. Because you, you guys talked last year, at least from a coaching perspective, so maybe this is more a pack question, but you moved Tom, when you traded Snacks, you moved Tomlinson that nose. Sure. Because you felt like Tomlinson was a, maybe a better fit at nose, but now it seems like. Well, that was the unintended consequence of that. But but I would say this, with those, you know, when we play base defense, you have a five technique, a three technique, and a one technique, and we certainly can play all three of those guys. And then when we get into our even fronts, then certainly there'll be a little bit of a rotation there, I think, which is good. And um, But again, you can't have too many good quarterbacks. You can't have too many good corners. And when it comes to defensive linemen, you can't have too many good front people. And, you know, they all got to compete. And, and I, we're, we're really thrilled about him. If you haven't been around him, this is a big human being. And he moves well, and he's, he's sneaky quick. And I think he's going to be a really good addition to our front. Yeah, he, had, he had a screw in his foot. He's, he's 345 pounds. He needed a screw in his foot, he said. Does that, did that play he's into fine. the process at all? He's fine. He's medically he's clear. We're fine with him. This was not four a four sacks in the past two years. Uh, I'm sorry? Had, he had four sacks in the past two years. But Playing just, on a bad foot. So you attribute it to that? But I would he also can't get, He can't be a pass rusher from the inside? Kim, he's not, you know, can he affect. Here's what I want. Here's what everybody needs to understand, okay? This is where numbers, Paul, don't tell all the story, okay? Defensive tackles can affect the pass rusher if they get consistent inside push. How many times have you guys watched a game where the ends come screaming off the corner and the quarterback steps up and there's nobody there? When you get inside pass rush push, those ends come screaming off the corner, they're going to affect it. And if the guy's getting push, they're going to get the, they're going to, the quarterback's going to step up and Dexter will give him a kiss. And screaming out the corner. Kim, Rome wasn't built in a day. You know, by the way, Lorenzo Cotta had five and a half sacks last year. You know? Yeah, but the Giants' two most recent Super Bowl teams had right around 50 sacks I would, in I, a season. I, I was I, with them. I understand that. <laughs> but, but that was a team, you know, both of those teams Absolutely. really affected the Kim, quarterback. Kim, Rome wasn't built in a day, Dallin. It wasn't built in a day. This takes time. This will be the last one. The pickup Daniel Jones oh, was booed by Giants fans at MetLife tonight. Yeah. What would you tell those fans who are angry, upset that you you picked Daniel Jones? What would I what would I say to them? In 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 time you'll be very pleased. 